shapes and sizes. We'll now move and look at spheres, circles, and cones. A note here on rearranging equations. Basically, questions related to length, area, and volume often require you to find the value of a particular variable. But they'll give you all the others, because if they don't, you can't figure it out. There's only one variable you can find. The equations in the tables are written in one particular standard way. And it's often necessary to rearrange that form. So the desired variable that you want is on the left-hand side, not on the right in all the other noise that's there. So we start now with a question on circumference. circumference. Rearrange the equation for the circumference C of a circle into the formula for the radius of the circle. So you look up your table, and this is given. You're told that C is 2 pi r. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. And that might be fine, but it's unlikely that they'll say the radius is 10, find the circumference. They're more likely to say the circumference of a circle is find the radius. So they'll tell you what this answer is, and you have to find r. So how do you do that? Well, effectively, what we do is we refocus our attention on this variable here, r. And we want to find out what r is. We want that to be on the left-hand side on its own. So we can, if c is 2 pi r, we could also say that's equal to c, because if it's equal this way, it's equal that way. So we effectively turn what was on the right-hand side into the left-hand side. So 2 pi r is c. At this stage now, r is on the same side that we want, but it's multiplied by 2 pi. How do we get rid of the multiplication of 2 pi? Divide by 2 pi. We might divide first by 2 if we want it, and that would give us pi r is c over 2. But we still have pi there, so we might now divide by pi. r is, and they'll cancel, r is c over 2 pi. So we now have a different equa the same equation, but a different form of the equation where r is equal to c over 2 pi. And now in any exam question where they say, here's the circumference, find the radius, well, we just put in the circumference value on the right-hand side, that's a number, 2 is a number, pi is a number, and we have our answer. And we've turned it around. We use the same technique again and again and again. All we're doing is the skill set that we've learned elsewhere with the manipulation of algebraic expressions is we're going to turn them around. So here we've got a standard form for a circle. Rearrange the equation of, for the area A of a circle into an equation for the radius of the circle. Now, in the book, in your tables, A is pi r squared. A is pi r squared. But we are interested in the variable r. Not the square of it, but just the variable r. At the moment, it's squared, which we don't like. It's multiplied by something which we don't like, and it's on the wrong side. Is that OK? So we start by saying, well, let's move it out of there if we can. And let's put in equals a. And that gives us pi r squared is a. Is that right? What's the pi? Multiplication, is it? The twin of multiplication? Division. So you look at division and you say, let's get rid of that. And we don't even have to think on the left-hand side because the reason we did it was to get rid of it. So we now have r squared is a over pi. We're not bad. We've got r squared here. What do we wish instead? r. How do we, what's the pair, the, the twin of the square? Square root square root. We don't know what happens here other than it goes away. R is the square root of a over pi. And that's our formula now, and we can use that. So here we see it. The first thing we do is just make that equal to a, and use the right-hand side. Pi r squared is a. Get rid of the pi, square root, and there's our answer. We don't have to have plus or minus before the square root until the square root is taken. Now, these are past question standards that have come up only for a few small marks, admittedly, but they're there. 
the area of a circle is 10. 10 metres, 10 centimetres. They would give you the units. Find its radius correct to two decimal places. Again, you go to the tables and you say, what's the equation for the area of a circle? A is pi r squared. What does r stand for in terms of terms? Radius, so that's what we're looking for. So in other words, we're asked to find r. A is pi r squared. What else were we told? That it's equal to 10. So A is pi r squared is 10. So effectively, pi r squared is 10. Find r. Well, if pi r squared is 10, what could I do to get rid of the, simplify the left? Divide by pi, because that's a multiplication. That solves that. That leaves me with r squared is 10 over pi. And the r squared, how do I do that? Square root it. Because it's the one thing that will eliminate the square for me. So I end up then with r is equal to the square root of 10 over pi. And there are marks for that. There's r squared is 10 over pi. The square root of that is 10 over pi. R is equal to the square root of that. And with your calculator, 10, divide by pi, hit the square root button, and you get 1.78 to whatever many decimal places you need. Same applies in the question of a sphere. Rearrange the formula for the volume V of a sphere into a formula for the radius of a sphere. We look at the left-hand side. First of all, we go to the tables, and it says we are told that the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed, but we're interested in the r of it. We want r on the left-hand side on its own. We do equal to v, and that tidies that bit up. 4 over 3, do we like the 4 over 3? No, we could multiply by 3 over 4, but we could take it a step at a time. Let's just multiply by 3. Multiplying this by 3, and this by 3, means that the 3's cancel, and we've got 4 pi r cubed is 3v. Do we like the 4 pi there? Wouldn't think so. We could divide by 4, maybe. We could divide by 4 pi as well, but dividing by 4 would bring us to this one. Pi r cubed is 3v over 4 which isn't bad. What about the pi? Can we get rid of that? Is it multiplying there? It's not plus, it's not add, it's not square, it's not cubed, it's not multiplication. So we divide by pi and divide by pi. So that's 3v over 4 pi. If we bring that to the next slide, we can see that r cubed is 3v over 4 pi, or that could be 3v, depends on, that's the same, it'll be, that's the same as 3v over 4 pi. How do we get rid of the cube? Cubic root. It's the one thing that'll do it, the cubed root. And then we know that if we put the cubed root in, we're left with just r. The cubic root of 3v over 4 pi. OK? And that's the volume. Then a specific question on the volume of a sphere. The volume of a given sphere is 30 pi. Now, they'll say 30 pi centimetre cubed. They'll keep the units. They will be correct. Find its radius. What's the letter we use for the radius? R, so that's R. The volume, what's the formula? V. And it's 30. So we're told that V is 4 over 3 pi r cubed is equal to 30 pi. So 4 over 3 pi r cubed is 30 pi. Any simplification there on either side? or Fancy having a go at maybe dividing by pi or something? If we divide it by pi, we could divide by the 4 first if we wanted. If we divide it by pi first, what would happen? They fall out. 4 over 3, r cubed, is 30. 
How do I get rid of the three? Multiply both sides. 4r cubed is 90. Get rid of the 4. r cubed is 22.5. How do I get r? The only way I can do it is the cubic root of this. I must be taking the cubic root of that. That's the only thing that will get rid of it. So this must be the cubic root. And that's how we do it. We, get, we work through the steps. As I said, v was equal to 30 pi. 4 pi r cubed is 30 pi. And we can do this in any order we want. We could have a go first at getting rid of the, the pi's. We could have got rid of the 4's or the 3's. Cubic root of 22.5, or is that? You see the pattern, don't you? You see that this is a skill set that you have in spades. Step by step, one thing at a time, what am I getting rid of? It's going to come out. You're going to get the marks. You're going to pick up the marks of the method, but you're going to get full marks for it as well because it's just clean. It's just repetitive process, step by step. We take this example now of a cone. Rear, and the cone is slightly different because it's two variables, but they have to give three variables, but they have to give you two of them. Rearrange the equation for the volume V of a cone into an equation for its vertical height. Now, you don't have to learn this off because you're given the equation in the book of a cone, that the volume of a cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared, where r is the radius, and h is the, the vertical height of the particular cone from its base. Is that okay? So that's the shape of the cone. You're asked to figure out, again, our pet, oh no, into an equation for its vertical height h. This time I'm interested in h. But I could have been interested in r, I'm interested in h. Okay? So how do I get that? Well, it's on the wrong side, isn't it? The left side. So we just put in a V there, and it becomes visible on the right-hand side. Any idea how we might get rid of the 1 over 3? Multiply by 3. So it becomes 3V there, and that becomes 3 times that. 3 times that, they cancel. So pi r squared h is 3V. Any idea on the getting rid of the next step? not gone in the pi much. So, in fact, I might even take the pi r squareds together. But pi r squared h is equal to, was equal to 3v. I could have said that's multiplication, that's multiplication, that it's all multiplication, and I could have divided it in one go by pi r squared and solved it that way. h is equal to 3v over pi r squared. Or I could have said, look, there's no need to rush. It's not a mad dash. I can do pi r squared h is 3v. And I can say, let's take it a step at a time. I don't like the pi. r squared h is equal to 3v over pi. Now I'd say I'm really not gone on this r squared. h is equal to 3v over pi r squared. Same thing. Is that okay? So that's the approach. Here's an example now where it says the volume of a given cone, with numbers, the volume of a given cone is 10 pi. If the cone has a radius of r of 2, find h its vertical height. Now that question might have looked sort of worth doing or maybe substantial before. But let's look at it. The volume of a given cone equals 10 pi. It's cones. If it's cones, v is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. The volume, v, equals 10 pi. So we've now written down, that's what we know. If the cone has a radius r of 2, r is 2. We go into lockdown mode, r is 2. Everywhere I see an r, I'm putting in 2. v then becomes, v is equal to 1 over 3 pi r, oh yeah, I have a number for that, that's 2, squared h is 10 pi. 
I work out the calculations and I say that's 1 over 3 times pi times 4 h is 10 pi. I might do some tidy up here and I'll say 4 over 3 pi h is 10 pi. Anything there that you see on both sides? I think the pi. So you might divide there. 4 over 3 h is 10. What do I want? H. So I'm not going to, I could multiply by 3 over 4, but I won't. I'm going to multiply first by 3. And that gives me 4H is 30. H would be what? How do I get rid of that 4? Divide. So H is 30 over 4 because I'd have to divide this by 4 and that by 4 to do it, wouldn't I? H is 30 over 4, which is 7.5. Okay? So there's the example, solving for the vertical height. The 1 over 3 r squared h is that. I multiplied by the 3. I had h then was 30 over r squared was another way of doing it. So you see what happened there? I did it generally before I put in the numbers. I kept the r. I didn't substitute for 2. And then I said, but r was equal to 2. 30 over 2 squared is 30 over 4, which is 7.5. So it shows that it doesn't really matter. You go down one route or the next route, you'll end up at the same place. You can get rid of a letter first or second or put in the numbers now or later. It doesn't matter. You'll get there in the end, okay? And that's the end of that topic.